Hey guys, it's Kristen, and I had the honor of stopping by the Roxy Hotel for an interview with the dark director Justin P. Lang and actress Nadia Alexander. This was one of my favorite films at Tribeca. I just love how this story was about a girl who was essentially forced into becoming a monster to protect herself, and I would love for you guys to check out this interview. Here you go. This is my favorite film at Tribeca. Thank you! I like loved it so much. I have all these like deep questions for you, so hopefully we'll have enough time for them all. Um, so, you know, Dark is not your typical zombie movie. Can you tell us a little bit about this moment, like, where the inspiration came from as, like, a writer and director? Yeah, um, so, I would say, you know, when I was, when I was in film school at, at Columbia, uh, I started to explore, I kind of was, was a late to the party when it came to doing horror. It was, you know, it wasn't until my last actual, my class in directing that uh, my teacher kind of started to push me in that, in that way. Um, and uh, I had, you know, I I'm, I'm just love the film Let the Right One In, um, also Pan's Labyrinth and Devil's Backbone. These are films that like just kind of were like gateways for me into the horror genre. Um, but there was this nagging question in my mind or this, this thing that was like, I just, I'd like to see a horror film where, or is it possible to do a horror film where the protagonist is the monster? Um, and, and we are with them, and it's, you know, uh, it, emotionally. Um, and it was, a, it was something that I knew would be a challenge, but I just, you know, that's kind of what excites me as a filmmaker. So if, I, if I think of something that I feel like I haven't seen before, that drives me forward. And so then the question was just finding the right monster that, that I wanted to be with. And, uh, and so then I, and, you know, there's a lot of my, a good amount of my work so far, but there's, this common thread of dealing with abuse, and uh, and uh, I needed to find that thing uh, for that character that that would, that would drive me forward, and that I could be with her in her righteous anger and rage, and uh, that's where I found Mina, and it really kind of propelled me into the script in a powerful way, and I was with her, and I and I I trusted that if I was with her, uh, then I could bring the audience with me. Absolutely. And uh, speaking of what you said about um, stories of, of abuse, you know, this film obviously touches a lot of dark topics, abuse, yeah. rape. What, what is it like tackling that as a director and writer and as an actor? Uh, it's, um, I mean, it's, I, sometimes people say like it's not like a director chooses the story or a writer chooses the story, the story chooses them. Like Harry Potter. <laughs> yeah. Um, is that her? Yeah. Get out. Leave. It's, yeah, I mean, it's, uh, it's something that I just, let's just say, like, I just feel really, really strongly about. Uh, and, it, and it hits me in a place that I, that's very visceral. Um, and uh, so, you know, and I needed that for this film. Like, I needed a way in that would, that, that I, that wasn't just like an intellectual thing. You need to be a visceral, like, or, um, and uh, so, and, and I just, I just felt really strongly um, that I need to, I just, I, I wanted to protect these kids, you know, and, and it was just like, it, it got to the point where I was like, by the time we shot the film, I was just, I was so protective of them, and I was just like so meticulous at everything. You know, I just thought so much, so much of it through, and um, and uh, yeah, I forget the question. <laughs> <laughs> just no, like, dealing with abuse. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, tackling those issues. Uh, yeah, it's uh, it just felt it becomes like you, you and I, I think Nadia to some extent would probably agree. Like it, you, you start to you know it is it is an emotional, visceral thing, and then there's all, there's also you start to feel like a responsibility to it. You're giving voice to something, and 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 it, it becomes. You want to do right by you know you want to you want to do justice like these these characters feel like people and uh, and and like I said they, 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 you do start to kind of want to protect them and want their you know want them to be represented yeah, and, uh, yeah in a powerful way absolutely no I mean that's I, I absolutely felt um, I think you always feel I've I've played uh, in several several iterations I've played victims of abuse and, and you always feel a certain responsibility to to portray it accurately and also to portray it unapologetically because abuse is horrible and it make it can make monsters 
that that would not have been there if it weren't for that abuse. And I think for me, it was really important to lean into the the pain and the rage and the anger. You know, I, I've been thinking about that a lot recently. Just you know, very very few times we actually get to see kind of the, the victim's story as it happens, and, and and you know, we hear a lot about it in retrospect, but it's it's hard to, to watch and to experience and, and it's painful, but I also think it's extremely important that we have these conversations and we have these this art about abuse because I think that for a really long time it's been sort of taboo to talk about, but I think that's ridiculous. I think that it's, it's unfortunately, so many people have suffered abuse in, in, in one way or another. It's sort of a, a spectrum, but there's, there's a lot of pain in, in our past and how we were raised or whatever that, that can kind of change who we are and how we go into the future and how we deal with every little thing in our life, our relationships, our careers, anything, you know, can be traced back to certain damaging things that have happened um, to you. And, and I think talking about that stuff and, and really looking at it is important. For, How do you, yeah, for the for for victims for abusers you know to, to be faced with with the reality of it it's really like it's just the cycles of abuse and cycles of violence I'm always I'm always kind of examining that that kind of it feels like it's just kind of violence begets violence begets violence and that kind of thing and it's just like at what point you know where does it where does the curse will stop you know and, and I hope it's I hope it's bringing it into the light I hope that helps you know the the not letting it just be behind closed doors and nobody talks about it, you know, having it be more to the forefront of the, the cultural discourse and, and talking about it, I think yeah. is how we try to stem a, a very deep-seated problem. Mm -hmm. Going off of what you guys are saying, I mean, one of the things that I really loved about Mina's journey is that what I took away from it was that, you know, at the center of this film, it's this young woman who's, you know, kind of pushed beyond her limits to become this monster, and then she kind of rises up later on, um, but I just think that's such a powerful story, and I'd love to hear your thoughts on how this film kind of has a place in the midst of, like, the Me Too movement. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I, you know, when I wrote it, that was, that was uh, years, it was about, I think I started writing about five years ago, um, and it's, uh, it, it, Maybe I'll formulate my thoughts. You know. <laughs> I'll start. You know, we'll, we'll come back to you. No, I think. I mean, I think. You know, similarly to what I what I was just saying. You know, a lot of what's been going on with me too is people is women coming forward and talking about abuses that they've suffered in the past. And um, you know, there's there's not there's it's I think unfortunately people disengage because they're like they'll come up with excuses or whatever, and you read it in an article and you just you make your own opinions and they're not always the best opinions and I think being confronted with it and having to watch it happen and having to watch the consequences because the, the film itself is really just a, one big metaphor for abuse and, and, and Mina's monster comes out of that mm -hmm. and I think that that's I think it's fitting. I mean, obviously, we didn't plan for it to come out, right? You know, we, we, we went into the future, we took our time machine, we saw the Me Too movement that was happening, and then we released the film at the exact same time. No, but, it's, um, but I think, you know, I, I, I think it's... We're uncovering the monsters, the real monsters right now. And that's what's most important. Nina is not the real monster. Obviously. Yeah, I mean, I think it's similar to kind of what I was saying. It's just like, what's important and like Nadia was saying, is that, is that it's, start, it's starting to be talked about, you know? And also the spectrum of kind of what is abuse is starting to kind of, it's, it's uh, I think a lot of people, obviously it's, it's with the film, it's, it's pretty much, it's pretty blatant what the abuses, what the abuses are and, and, and that that is abuse. But there's a there's a spectrum of what is abuse, okay. and I think sometimes people feel like you know, well, my abuse isn't that, so it's fine. <laughs> or like or, or I I don't really have to you know deal with it. Um, whereas like no, there's lots of different types of abuse, and, and what this what this conversation has done is started to to um, it's it's really just people talking and relating their stories, um, and it's sort of what happens with Mina and Alex is that they find kind of a, a mirror image of, of, of themselves and, and, their, and their experiences 
and it's through kind of uh, finding a, an empathetic way to, to relate to each other that they're able to move forward and that cycle stops. Um, and up in, but before that, when Mina was in this, this kind of quiet, self-protected cocoon where nobody comes near me, if you come near me, you're going to get it, um, nothing gets solved that way, yeah. you know, um, because the, the, there's, there's, there's no discussion. And, uh, and so, yeah, I mean, obviously, I, I, didn't, I didn't know that the movement was going to happen, but, it, but it's, it's, uh, it's incredibly important that it is, that, that, that people are starting to discuss this stuff and that it's, that it's getting out there, and it's just, uh, you know, I... If, if we are part of that discussion, I hope it's in a helpful way, let's say that. Yeah. Um, because that's, that's the side I want to be on. <laughs> Absolutely, I, I mean, that's what I took away from the film. I like really connected to your character and just seeing how strong she was and how, like you said, she became this monster, but she was really a protective type of way to keep the bad people away from her type of thing. Um, can you talk a little bit more about the connection that Mina and Alex had? Um, yeah, I mean, I think that the connection, it's interesting, we've talked because every once in a while there, somebody will, will say it's romantic, which I never intended. Um, you, can't, you can't control people in the film, um, but I actually actively tried to, we talked about it, I mean, I cast uh, Mina to be a little older than Alex, um, I, I kind of saw Mina as a little more powerful than Alex. Uh, where he, he, you know, he, he was, even though they're both victims, uh, Alex kind of played the victim a little bit more than, than Mina did. Mina kind of was, took, uh, took her victimhood and, and, uh, and turned it into something else. Um, and, uh, yeah, I mean, I think, I think what they find is, is really more, something more human. One of the things Nadia and I connected on is our, is our love for Sufjan Stevens. Oh my god. And, uh, and there's this song, uh, the, 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 the Predatory Wasp of the Palisades. Is... And, um, and the, you know, if you go on the annoying internet, sometimes they'll talk about, like, oh, you know, there's a boy who kisses the shoulder, and that means this, and that means that. And I just, I, I remember hearing that song, and I was just like, that's just, that just feels human. I don't, it doesn't feel sexualized to me at all. It feels like these two friends that just are, you know, at a sleepaway camp. I don't know, it just, it, it, it felt, for me, with the dark, it felt like there was, there was no, it, 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 was, it was something deeper than romantic love. You know, it was something indelibly human. Um, that they just they, they, they needed each other, you know they, they, they were the thing that they needed to, to see and to well to, I don't see but, <laughs> so but, but to, to experience in order to kind of to, to take the next step forward um, from their from their situations. Yeah. No, I, I never saw I never saw it as a romance when I when I even when I read it because I don't just automatically assume oh there's a boy and a girl they must be in love because I think that's dumb. Um, just in the same way I don't see a girl and a girl and go, oh, they must just be friends. You know, there's humanity and, and it's it's all a mix. And, and I think we, we obviously, to make sense of this world, try to categorize things and put things into boxes. But like this whole film can't be put into a box. And that's what I love so much about it. And also Toby is literally my brother's age and we have a nine year age difference. So <laughs> I was like, this is not, no. But he was, I mean, he was like my little brother. It was, it was that immediate kind of connection and, and protection and you know um, that's what I loved so much about it was it felt really authentic and really not trying to be anything just being human yeah Even I mean, she's not she's undead it's as much as the killing is it is, 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 is a feels like a need and an instinct for me to it's 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 as, it's just as powerful in that moment when they put with the hug at the table where you know he, he just kind of you see that he just kind of needs it, <laughs> and he, you know, he's grappling for it, and then she kind of, they just kind of sink into it, and it's like, oh my god, it's like an exhale, yeah. you know, and that's, uh, that's kind of how I see the relationship for them. 
I was wondering if you could shed light a little bit on what actually like cursed Mina into becoming this undead kind of creature. Uh, yeah, I mean, I, so it's really, it's, I, I see her as like animated by rage. She's like a rage monster. And, and something that some people pick on, pick up on, I'm not sure that everybody does, but uh, in the flashbacks you notice, it's not like she, she dies and then she comes back and she's a zombie. It's a, it actually starts before she dies. In the first flashback, she's drawing and, 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 she's, and, and there's this growling as we're moving in on her and it's like something's changing, something's growing inside her. And then it kind of happens again in the second flashback. So she doesn't actually come back until later in the movie, you know, the third iteration of the flashbacks. And so the idea is that there's this, there's this growing rage uh, inside her that is something bigger than herself. At a certain point, it's taking over, and uh, and that's what kind of propels her. Like it's it's this justifiable rage that won't let her go quietly, mm -hmm. you know. And that's kind of how I felt. It was kind of like if if these stories are allowed to kind of play with the, the laws of nature, I felt like uh, she just you know. This was a this was a rage that the uh, the the world would say, you know, no, she can't go yet. You know, she's got a she's got a score to settle, and and, and, and uh, that's kind of where it was coming from. Um, that was what was propelling her was that rage and that anger. That's really awesome. I feel like you can really see that, like over the course of the film, like you know, obviously she's becoming more human as she like loses that rage and like finds that empathy and love and like that you know, freedom. So, I just thought it was awesome. I like loved it so much. Oh, thank, you so much. Um, thank you guys. This thank is really you. great. Thank you so much for watching. Give this video a thumbs up if you liked it and click that subscribe button for more coverage from Tribeca Film Festival.